page. I'm Terrell, and I thought we'd talk about some really good stuff today. I'm going to try to do these quickly. I've recorded this a bunch of times already, as usual. So anyway, today I thought we'd talk about consciousness. And I'm going to talk about consciousness as matter, as atoms, that are informationally connected. In other words, electromagnetically connected. Um, the normal forces of physics. So, if you look at an atom, this is not an atom, this is a lot of atoms, actually. Oh, but our models of atoms show that there are um, sort of spaces where electrons can be sometimes. So, for example, uh, an atom might have one empty space where there could be an electron that sort of fills its outer shell, as they say. And this is actually what defines what an atom is, which atoms are which, uh, or how many electrons there are, basically. So anyway, so this is supposed to be a hydrogen atom, um, and there's one space. It's the smallest, um, smallest atom. And so it has an opening for one extra electron. And now it, you could say it wants. And want just means uh, a state that it, it naturally, physics wise, um, tends to move towards. Uh, just like a ball at the top of a hill, if you're holding the ball, there's the potential energy for it to roll down the hill. It wants to roll down the hill. It's just a natural. Uh, you know, thermodynamics law of, of the direction that it naturally should be moving, or it's not what it naturally does. So this, this hydrogen atom here wants to connect to one more electron. And, and I'm not going to go into this too much in detail about the chemistry. Um, it's not super important. But basically, it's got this, this open space that it wants to do something. And now this red one, comes along, and this is um, hydrogen. No, sorry, oxygen. This is oxygen. And this one has two open spaces. So, and, and these little connector things, they're basically inconsequential. But it, it's complicated, but um, they're just here to connect the things. So we see these two things floating around, and they're like, hey, look, we can share an electron. And then we would be complete. Well, this one would be complete. This one would be more complete. The oxygen. And then there's another one. There's another hydrogen floating around, and they're like, oh, we're made for each other. Let's connect. It's true, though. This is water. Hydrogen dioxide. Hydrogen di oxide. Oxide. Okay, so it's happy. It's happy. It's true love. It's, it's married. It's a threesome. It's perfect. It's so happy. It's content because it is in its natural state, uh, or it's its um, its full state, where it feels complete. That all of these feel complete together because they're sharing electrons and completing their outer shells. And it's like a puzzle. So anyway, so this is happy, and now this is conscious, but only at the most minimal level of consciousness, and I even call it level zero of consciousness, but it's more like a fetal state of consciousness. It's aware of itself. It, it is itself. It knows itself because it is itself. I mean, it's not aware of itself in relation to anything else. It is just aware of itself. Its current state is what it is. And the information is flowing from here to here. This is all informationally connected, meaning energy. It's connected via energy. So if something happens to this one, if something bumps into it, it's going to affect. If I come along and move this, it's going to affect the whole thing. So it's informationally, energetically connected. If something happens to one of the things, something happens to all of them. Um, but it's still it's like as minimally conscious as possible. It's only aware of itself. It's very more. It's like the identity state in, uh, in uh, reflections and in uh, uh, 
symmetries. The, the identity state is itself. It's, it's the most boring thing out there. Um, but anyway, but it, it's basically fetally, it's like the, the conception point of a human being. When you're conceived, you exist, but there's not really anything going on. But then, you get into a more complex system. This is butane, I believe. Pretty sure it's butane. Um, something with B. And, oh, the connections here are just different. Um, they're just smaller, it is slightly more representative of, of what the actual molecule would look like than, than the larger ones. So, but they, they don't really matter. Um, but I wanted to show you this because, um, so this is, this is all complete. All of the, oh, these are carbons, uh, carbon atoms, the bigger ones, and they have four uh, open, uh, empty electron spaces, whatever you want to call them. And these are, again, these are hydrogen. So this is, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple molecule, but there's something interesting going on in this. First of all, so, so let's say these things come together, and they're like, they're, they're mostly formed, but they're like, we're still missing something, we're still missing something. Hey! <laughs> True love! <laughs> so, they're, they're complete in that they're, all of their electrons are, they're all sharing all their electrons, they're all filled, uh, and they're content, except that there's also a chart, there's also a charge, like a, like a, a river or a, an ocean, water flowing. So for um, example, in a, if there's water flowing, in a beach, and there's, there are ocean waves coming in onto the beach. So this is the beach, and the ocean waves are coming in, um, and they, they move up the beach. But then there's the more ocean waves behind there. So there's some water still coming back from the, you know it's gone up. The energy of the wave has pushed the water up. You see this? Energy pushes the water up the little beach hill, um, but then it's up there and it, it needs to come back because it's on a hill. Uh, but then there's a wave behind it, and so there's a little wave coming back this way, and a wave coming back this way, and they bump into each other, you know, too much energy crashing into each other, and it makes kind of a, a pushing effect. So this one pushes this way, and this one pushes this way, so it's a repellent effect. Well, the same thing happens here. There's energy flowing this way, or whatever, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but there, there's energy flowing in multiple opposite directions. And so these particles right here, you can see this, they're bumping into each other. They're, they're right there. And they don't like that, they're pushing away from each other. So this naturally would prefer to be in this state. It wants to push itself that way. But that affects the whole system. This, this flip-flopping changes the pattern of the whole system. And then there's also, there are these little, these can rotate this way. And so they probably want to be more like that, but maybe that, I don't know. I don't want to wiggle around. So these things are sort of as far away from each other as possible. I don't know. But anyway, so there are multiple states in this system. And it, it does tend to prefer one state over another. So it wants to move this way. But when it does that, it's informationally connected. So this this knows this over here, this part of the system, even though it's not connected. I mean, it's not it's not bumping into each other over here. It's aware because of the because of the electromagnetism. This this energy is traveling around, and it travels differently based on you know whether it's this in this format or in this format. So there's an awareness of change. So this is aware as it's changing of the change. And this is where life happens. You get to a state in the proteins and DNA especially, um, but in all kinds of different systems in our body and ourselves that have multiple states that they can be in. Like these all move. So there are multiple different states that this can be in. And it's sort of aware of those states. And it's starting to be aware that these states can change, and that they're either about to change or that they want to change. Uh, 
or again, if something happens to this side, you know, say something, there's a force over here, there's some more molecules, and it bumps into this one, it'll move these around, and that affects the whole thing. So they're informationally connected, energetically. Information is energy. Um, so because they're connected, and because it's aware, the more complex that this gets, the more molecules we have. Now DNA is huge. I don't know if you've seen, you know, you've seen the, the stacks and stacks and it's all twisted up. So it's, you know, it's way bigger than this, way more complex than this. And it's constantly trying to change. It's constantly wanting, you know, it's bumping into other things and it's, and it's constantly changing its environment, changing its state, its current state, because it wants to be in a different state. Uh, so that is where we get higher levels of consciousness, beyond just being aware of itself. It can start being aware of external things. And that's because there are multiple different possible states. So for example, when a cell, a single cell organism, gets hungry, uh, that means that there's something, there's some energetic state that's happening inside of it. That it, it wants something. There is there is a natural lacking of you know whether it's the electrons that you know are flowing in one direction or whether there's a there's a any anyway, whatever it is you know, chemistry wise there's something lacking and that it so it wants to do something and so all of the different complex systems are interacting there and they informationally are aware of this want, this desire. And this is a change in the system, a larger state of change, so that it can be aware, not only of its current state, which pure atoms are aware of themselves, themselves. they are themselves, therefore they contain the information that is themselves, that is itself. <laughs> but life is aware of a future state that it wants to be in. So, and how that happens, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to go into it. But basically, the, it's, it's the idea of this wanting to be in a different state. And so, life is aware not just of its own state, it is what it is, but it's also aware of a future state. It either wants to eat, or it doesn't want to eat anymore, or it wants to get... Uh, it wants to procreate in some way, whether it's cell division or whatever. It wants to do that. And it has choices. So it's these, these multiple possible different states, which is also entropy. The more complex the system is, the higher the entropy. So that's the more possible states that the system can be in, the more entropy it has. In a, in a limited sense. I mean, in the universal sense, it's the same thing. But, um, you know, this this has more entropy than this. Because this, this isn't going to do much of anything. This has one state. This particular mo molecule of water has one state. It, it can't, you know, it can't move. It's just connected that way. But this can move. This has different multiple states. So this is a slightly higher level of entropy, which is the same thing as consciousness the higher level of consciousness in this system because it has multiple different states that it can be in. So, when we get up in life, we can start having these multiple different states that the system can be in and those states can affect how the states are affected. So it's, it's this, it's almost like a Rube Goldberg machine. That's what consciousness is. It's these atoms that are like bumming at each other and things are falling down and knocking each other over and kicking each other and attracting to each other and moving things around within the system in multiple different ways. So there's a potential for a lot of different future states and it is aware of the future states that it wants, that it naturally is moving towards. So it's almost like prediction. So consciousness is almost like prediction. The more potential future states there are, the more complex the prediction can be. 
and when we get to uh, social animals like humans and, and higher functioning mammals. Uh, well, all mammals are uh, emotionally, they have an emotional level of complexity of consciousness, which means that they can model another individual. Um, and this is for child rearing specifically, but it also works for partner choice and it works for um, you know friend choice and it works for you know like building a tribe kind of thing or something like that. You only need emotional level connection for the, the most basic connections between others. Um, so you can model what they want. So, you know, for example, let's say I went to eat, but I can tell that you don't want to eat, for example, because you are running away from a tiger or, you know, something like that. But there are multiple different states that I can model. I can use to model what you are doing. I can predict what you want to do as well as what I want to do. And then emotionally I can decide who's I'm going to, you know, focus on at the moment. Like, maybe I'm going to help, maybe I'm going to run too, because the, the tiger is right there as well, and <laughs> should run, even though I'm hungry. Um, and then intellectual level um, consciousness is when we have three dimensions, so we can model, I can model myself and you, as well as our environment, and how the environment might change, and what the environment might want to do. Like, oh, look, it's about to rain. Um, Maybe we shouldn't go uh, plant flowers or something. <laughs> we were going to go plant flowers, and you and I were going to go together, and now it's going to rain, and it's like maybe it's not the best time to plant in mud. Maybe it is, but I can consider the change in the environment as opposed to thinking the environment is a steady state. Uh, and then philosophical level consciousness is four dimensions, which we rarely ever get to. Um, only, as far as I can tell, only humans have this level of consciousness. Um, and it's modeling the changes in me, you, the whole system, as related to the whole universe, what the universe wants. Um, and the universe itself changes, and not just the local environment, but the whole universe itself changes and, and has goals. So mapping all of those different systems all together is a theory of mind. So anyway, so that's my theory of consciousness. Uh, this is how I describe it. And that's simply informationally connected matter with multiple different potential states. And by information, I again mean just energy. Um, from multiple different states, and the higher the complexity, the higher the entropy, the higher the consciousness. Which you might have also heard uh, entropy is consciousness um, from Tononi. If not, that's okay. Um, my theory is a little simpler, I think, um, or a little more mathematically uh, rigorous. Not rigorous, but mathematically understandable, geometrically understandable, because it's I've just got the multiple dimensions um, and how they all relate. And that you can you can be aware of just your current state and or your current state and your future state. So that's one dimension as opposed to zero dimensions is just yourself. The atom is aware of the atom because it is it has the information of the atom. The two dimensions is wanting to change, being informationally aware of the change, wanting to change. The more complex the potential number of changes there are that could happen, the more complex the consciousness is, because it's just higher entropy and it's predicting, it's making more predictions out of a larger set of things, so it has to be more complex than the predictions that it makes. So anyway, so what do you think? Matter is just, I mean, consciousness is just matter that's informationally connected, energetically connected in a system. So it's just molecules, lots of really complex molecules. That's what we are, right? Anyway, if you uh, have any comments, any thoughts, um, I might not have explained this in the best way possible, but uh, I wanted to get it out there and, and share my thoughts on this. And uh, you can play with the idea and see what you think. If you'd like to get in touch with me, um, 
my email is thewiseturtle at gmail.com. It's all one word squished together, thewiseturtle at gmail.com. Uh, that's also my username on Twitter, thewiseturtle. Um, and you can find me on Reddit under turtle, T-E-R-I-L. Uh, is my username there. So I would love to hear from you. And um, I'll leave you with that. And wish you well with your consciousness and all of your multiple potential uh, future states, right? Okay. Bye. Namaste.